today I'll be looking at a reaction that I conducted between two elements, sodium and bromine. Sodium is an alkali metal, putting it in group 1 of the periodic table. It is incredibly reactive with air, and explosively so with water, as I'm sure you know. Sodium has a melting point below the boiling point of water, which allows it to become molten relatively easily in reactions. This also means, as you can see, that it is a solid at room temperature. Bromine is a halogen in group 7 of the periodic table. It is a liquid at room temperature, but it has a high vapor pressure, so it evaporates readily into a reddish-brown gas. Bromine liquid is a dark red color, as you can see here. The boiling point is only 59 degrees Celsius. Sodium and bromine react very simply, as shown here, to form sodium bromide, a salt. I thought this would be a pretty easy reaction to reproduce, given the formula, but it turns out that I was very wrong. I tried to record two perspectives in most of these shots, so bear with the shakiness of the handheld ones. So I added a small piece of sodium into the flask, and then some bromine on top. You can see as soon as the bromine leaves the pipette, the reddish brown vapors come off and fill the flask with a dark bromine liquid at the bottom on the sodium. With a little shaking, nothing really happened. Given this, I feared the activation energy, without doing any real calculations, was too high to start with room temperature chemicals. This, or of course the small oxide layer that formed on the sodium from storage, prevented the two from reacting. So I broke out the propane torch and tried to heat up the sodium to get it molten, and more likely to react. You can see that the bromine vapor is much thicker now compared to before, and slightly lighter in color, maybe suggesting some sodium bromide was formed. It also means, though, that bromine was evaporating quickly. Nothing impressive was really happening. The issue with this method was the boiling off of bromine associated with the heating of the sodium. You can see the bromine boiling rapidly here, with maybe some reacting, but surely not very much. With heating directly not working, I decided to add a small amount, probably about 10 milliliters or so, of water to make the sodium molten and more reactive with the bromine. You can see how the bromine sinks to the bottom of the water, given that it is three times as dense, while the now molten glob of sodium floats on top, being less dense. It continues like this for a while, with mild flashes from what I presume to be either sodium bromide formation or the burning of hydrogen. But given the low oxygen environment, it might actually be the formation of hydrogen bromide, but this is really only a guess, I can't test for that. And then, all of a sudden, it took off. You can clearly see the fine particles of sodium bromide floating around, making the bromine a more orange tinge. Here's the incredibly fast reaction from my perspective, holding the camera. It startled me considering how tame it was initially, and then how it just took off. So, what would any logical person do after being startled by an out-of-control reaction? Well, repeat it, of course. I added more sodium, and this is what happened the second time around. This reaction was very similar to the first one, but interesting in its own right. There seemed to be two different parts, and the products created ended up actually taking on a charred appearance. You may have also caught the flame that appeared at the top of the flask. Luckily, I got a somewhat decent aerial shot of the reaction, although it was a little far away as I was concerned that it was going to erupt again.
Up close, when I was sure I would be safe, you can see that the flask actually looks very similar to a cartoon volcano, which was very interesting as well. The heat of this second reaction actually was able to break the glass flask. Borosilicate 3.3 glass, which the flask is made from, has a supposed temperature differential of 165 degrees Celsius before fracturing, meaning the reaction must have gained that much heat and energy very quickly. This is even with the water to dissipate some of the heat gained. This was just a fun little video with nothing too incredibly analytical or scientific about it. I just made bromine and ran out of ampules that day, so I decided to use what I had in this experiment, as well as the ones in upcoming videos. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like these in the future.